Welcome back from that break. Let's now take a look at other decisions taken by the lawmakers. In plenary during the week, the House of Representatives urged the acting president, Yemi Oshibajo, to swear in and allocate portfolio and official duties to the minister-designates from Kogi and Gombe states within the next one week. The ultimatum followed the consideration of a motion of urgent national importance sponsored by Representative Sunday Karimi from Kogi state. A lawmaker in his motion informed the House that the Federal Executive Council, as constituted, is in breach of the 1999 Constitution as the two states are not represented. Aware that Section 147 provides that there shall be such offices of ministers of the Federation as may be established by the President, such ministers shall be nominated by the President and confirmed by the Senate. Section 1433 and section one four and section fourteen three shall comply. Honorable colleagues, order please. With Can we listen to our colleague in silence, please? With the principle of federal character, accordingly, each state shall have at least one minister. Cognizant that since third May 2017, the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has confirmed the appointment of Professor Stephen Ocheni from Kogi State and Suleiman Sama Hassan from Gombe State as ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, up to now, they have not been sworn in or allocated any office or portfolio. Worried that Kogi State and Gombe State are not represented in the Federal Executive Council. Thus, the Federal Executive Council as currently constituted is in flagrant breach of, the sec of Section 14.2 and Section 1473 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999. During the week, a lawmaker from Taraba State commended the reaction and intervention of the federal government in the crisis that erupted in the Membila Plateau recently. While awaiting the report of the committee set up to investigate the incident, the lawmaker also called on the National Emergency Management Agency to urgently provide relief materials for those who have been displaced. I want to appreciate the state government for their timely intervention. We were able to dispatch security men to the trouble zone and uh, that really helped a lot. I also want to appreciate the federal government for the quick and speedy dispatch of security agents to the zone. And that really helped to restore peace and order on the Mambela Plateau. I want to really appreciate them and believe that with the speed and manner, the federal government responding to our call to intervene. It has actually given us a hope. It has renewed our hope in the federal government. And it has shown to us that the federal government has risen up to its primary responsibility of protecting lives and property of its citizenry. So we really appreciate the federal government, we really appreciate the state government for their quick intervention. The situation would have been worse than what it is if same had been extended to them before now. I think an other trouble zone in the country, uh, the security challenges we're having today wouldn't have been the way it is uh, today. I am totally against any killing. I am totally against any form of violence to certain schools. I am totally against it. Dialogue remains the best way to settle issues. No matter how great, how grievous that issue might be, dialogue be, be, is the only solution to issues. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Yakubu Dogara, says agitations and calls for restructuring can only be actualized through amendment of the 1999 Constitution. In his speech, which was delivered by the Deputy Speaker of the House, Honorable Lasson Yusuf, the speaker also made it clear that the National Assembly will not be a stumbling block to the wishes of Nigerians. 
This was presented during a public hearing organized by the House Ad Hoc Committee on the review of the 1999 Constitution on three bills seeking to amend the Constitution. Though opinions are diverse and divided as to what should be prioritized in constitutional nutrition or reform exercise, it is settled that to utter or reform the Constitution, the procedure and processes prescribed by the Constitution itself must be complied with. Otherwise, the outcome and the procedure shall be unconstitutional and in nullity. You will agree with me that the National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly have pivotal rules to play. The process of amending the Constitution by the Eighth House of Representatives is in phases and piecemeal. Agitation for restructuring of the governance framework for Nigeria can only be done through alteration of the Constitution. I wish to say that the House of Representatives and indeed the National Assembly is ready to do its part in terms of amending the Constitution when the consensus has been reached on any matter by stakeholders and Nigerian citizens. The National Assembly will not constitute a stumbling block to the wishes and aspirations of Nigeria for genuine changes in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is a continuous exercise and as envisaged under Section 9 of the Constitution. In another development, the House of Representatives Committee on Public Accounts met with officials of the Office of the Head of Civil Service to the Federation. The meeting is based on queries raised by the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation in 2013. The Permanent Secretary from the Office of the Head of Civil Service to the Federation tried to explain away the queries. He was, however, interrupted. Four people were, were advanced to the tune of 46 million. Not so? Yes. Four people. Yes. And among them, one was adverse payment or opening and revelation of financial bid, which financial bid, when it was December, that the end of the year, advertisement in print media, 4.5 million. Placement of print media, which print media, of what purpose, when the year was already ended, and the program, which, 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 which information are you sending to the people? Because this money for this year, supposed to end this year. If it was not spent, the money supposed to go back into the treasury. After other members also raised issues with the response of the permanent secretary, he puts forward this position. I crave your indulgence to note that uh, this document before me, all the supporting documents are not attached because we just photocopied the face of the retirement vouchers. And I'm assuring you people, because I'm three weeks old in this uh, office, that I, I, I plead that you give me another opportunity to get the real documents before you people, including the supporting document of these retirements. The chairman of the committee gives a piece of advice and then rules on the matter. If you see black before this committee, <clears throat> don't attempt to persuade us to look at it as white. The whole issue is evident. The Auditor General asked, the query is that you did not retire this sum. Almost eight months after the event took place. We therefore hold that the sum of 46 million, 168,625 Naira, advance to four staff in December 2011 cannot be a proper expenditure of public fund. The permanent secretary is to recover the total sum from the officers within 40 days and evidence of recovery forwarded to the committee and the office of the Auditor General and Accountant General of the Federation. That's our ruling. So, what do you make of the issues tackled by lawmakers this week? Do you agree with the decisions taken or would you have voted nay on those issues? Let's hear from you. You can reach us through any of the addresses on the screen. And I look forward to receiving your contributions. Anyway, this is where I take my leave. Thanks for staying with me. Take care.